Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome, it is great to have you. If you are a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series about ANOVA, or Analysis of Variance. So in this playlist up to this point, we looked at a one-way ANOVA or a single-factor ANOVA. Then we looked at a two-factor ANOVA, a block ANOVA. Then we looked at a two-way ANOVA with replication. So this takes those analyses one step further. So a typical one-way ANOVA, for example, will tell us if differences exist among our groups. However, it does not tell us where those differences exist. So to find out where those differences do exist, we do what's called a post hoc analysis. So post hoc means after the fact. It's also called multiple comparisons. So ANOVA post hoc analyses are actually a family of different tests. So in this video, we will learn about one of them, which is Fisher's LSD. Go ahead and insert your LSD joke, go ahead. But LSD stands for least significant difference. Now there are several others. You may have heard of the Tukey test, the Chef test, and the Bonferroni test. But in this example, we're gonna focus on the Fisher LSD test. Now basically they all do the same thing, and I will briefly talk about the differences among them as we go forward. So let's go ahead and get started. So a very quick review. Why ANOVA in the first place? So up to this point in statistics, we were looking at comparing two populations. So an independent samples t-test or a random sample t-test, and then a matched sample t-test, which we call a paired t-test. Now, of course, limiting ourselves to the comparison of only two populations is well limiting. Sometimes we just have more than two populations we want to compare. So what if we wish to compare the means of more than two populations? What if we wish to compare populations each containing several levels or subgroups in those populations? Enter ANOVA. So remember, ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. Suppose we want to compare three sample means based off populations to see if a difference exists somewhere among them. So here's our first sample, our second sample, and our third sample. So what we are asking is, do all three of these means come from a common population sort of in the background? Or is one mean so far away from the other two that it is likely not from the same population as the other two? Or are all three means so far apart from each other that they all likely come from unique populations? That's what ANOVA can tell us. Now, one way we could do this is to do multiple t-tests. So we would do a t-test for each pair of sample means that we have. So we could have the first sample mean compared to the second sample mean. We could have the first sample mean compared to the third sample mean. And we could have the second sample mean compared to the third sample mean, all at an alpha level of 0 0.05. However, we cannot do it this way. There's a very significant problem, actually several problems doing it this way. The first issue is that a pairwise comparison means three t-tests, all with an alpha level of 0 0.05. That's a type one error rate at 95% confidence. But the issue in this example is that error compounds with each t-test. So we actually have 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95, which is 0.857. So our alpha level is actually one minus 0.857 or 0.143. That is significantly higher than 0.05. So in these cases, when we're doing multiple t-tests, we're actually compounding the error. Now, another thing that goes on is that we're actually disregarding the third sample when we're only looking at two at a time. So we can't pretend that it's just not there. And of course, the ANOVA handles all of our sample means at once. So by only selecting two and sort of partitioning them off to the side, doing a t-test, we're ignoring the third and the overall model. So because of the compounding error, and the fact that we're discounting part of our data, we cannot do it this way. And that's why we use the ANOVA procedure. So now that we did a quick review, let's go ahead and talk about post hoc analysis or multiple comparison procedures 
And we will do that, like I always try to do, with a sample problem. And this is called Coaster Wait Times. So you are an analyst for Kings Island Amusement Park located in Mason, Ohio, USA, which is actually literally just up the road from where I live. I actually spent my entire childhood going there multiple times a year. So you've been asked to determine if there is a difference in wait time between the three big roller coasters in the park, The Beast, Banshee, and Diamondback. To conduct your analysis, you track the wait time for 25 random riders on each ride. While a one-way ANOVA procedure will test the hypothesis that all three mean wait times are equal, the test will not, however, tell you where those differences occur among the coasters. So for a little bit of fun and to show you that these are actual places, let's go ahead and look at these. So this is Kings Island, and this is the first coaster called The Beast. At one time, it was the tallest, fastest, and longest wooden coaster on Earth. It still holds the record for being the longest at 7,400 feet. That is 1.4 miles or 2.25 kilometers of track. And being on this ride, especially at night in the dark, is one of my favorite places on Earth. The next is the Banshee, and the third coaster is the Diamondback. And I love all of them. Okay, so enough reminiscing. Let's go ahead and look at our data. So here are our multiple comparison procedures. So the ANOVA procedure only tells us if all the population means are equal or are likely to come from the same population. If the F test in the ANOVA is significant, we do not know where the differences are located, however. It is necessary to compare each population pair, what we call post hoc, or after the fact. So for example, if we have three groups, A, B, and C, the pairings would be group A and B, group A and C, and then group B and C, or that is three choose two or three pairs. If we have four groups, A, B, C, D, the pairings would be A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, and C, D, or four choose two pairs, which is six. Now there are several multiple comparison post hoc procedures. In this video, we will look at Fisher's LSD, but there's also the Tukey HSD, Chef's Method, and Bonferroni. And I think there are actually several others. Depending on the data, one of these methods may be more appropriate. And they also vary in terms of how conservative they are about detecting differences among each group. But in the end, in the grand scheme of things, they all essentially do the same thing. So this video we will focus on the Fisher's LSD test. So here is our data, the roller coaster wait times in minutes. So for the beast, the mean wait time of our 25 observation was 32.7 minutes with a standard deviation of 11.3 minutes. The Banshee had a mean wait time of 42.4 minutes with a standard deviation of 15.2 minutes. And the Diamondback, had a mean wait time of 58.9 minutes, the lines can get really long for Diamondback, with a center deviation of 16.1 minutes. And again, they all have 25 observations. So we can take these 75 observations, 25 for each roller coaster, put that into Excel and run a simple one-way ANOVA. When we do that, these are the results we get. So I highlighted some things in this chart because we're gonna use it later. So the first thing we want to look at is the significance of our overall model to tell if it is significant. So we look at the p-value field. We can see that the p-value is extremely small and therefore our overall model is significant. Therefore, we would reject the null hypothesis that all the means are equal or they come from the same population and then move on to the alternative hypothesis that they are all not equal. The next measure I want to point out is the mean square error. That's there in the orange color. So the 205.76 approximately. So that is the mean square error for our entire model. And I point that out because when we do the Fisher's LSD procedure, we're gonna need that number. And finally, the next thing I wanna point out is the degrees of freedom for our within groups or error term, which is 72. Because again, we will need that number going forward. So the overall ANOVA tells us that the means are not equal but it does not tell us where the means are not equal. So is the beast different from Banshee? Is Banshee different than Diamondback? Is the beast different from Diamondback? 
We don't know. And that's what the Fisher LSD test or any post hoc multiple comparison test will tell us. So let's go ahead and look at how to do that. So the first thing we create, it's very simple, it's called a difference matrix. Now this is simply a table comparing each pair of roller coasters. So we can see that down the diagonal, we're comparing each roller coaster with itself. So we don't really need those. And then the rest of the chart is simply a mirror image of the other half. So we could use the positive values in the upper right half. We could use the negative values in the lower left half, which is what we're gonna do. It doesn't really matter, but we only need those three values. Now remember the Diamondback had the longest wait time. So if we go down this first column here, we can see a negative 16.464. Well, that tells us that the average wait time for Banshee was over 16 minutes less than that for Diamondback. Same thing for the Beast. The average wait time for the Beast was over 26 minutes less than for Diamondback. Then moving over to the second column, we can see that the Beast wait time was 9.768 minutes less than that for Banshee. Because remember, the Beast had the lowest wait time, then Banshee, and then Diamondback. So this is simply a matrix of the differences of each pair. So what we have are three pairwise comparisons, Beast versus Banshee, Beast versus Diamondback, and Banshee versus Diamondback. So for Beast versus Banshee, our difference is negative 9.7. For Beast versus Diamondback, the difference is negative 26.2. And for Banshee versus Diamondback, the difference is negative 16.5. Now the question is, which of these pairwise comparisons contain significant differences? And that is what the post hoc multiple comparison procedures will do for us. But before we do a multiple comparison procedure or post hoc analysis, we're gonna look at a simple box plot of our data. Now, as I always say in many videos by this point, probably over a hundred videos, always do a graph or a chart or something visual to represent your data. So here we have a box plot and each coaster is colored. So the beast is in the blue, the Banshee is there in the pink, and the Diamondback is there in the green. So as we can see here visually, there is a difference between each one. So obviously the largest difference here visually is between the beast and Diamondback, so the blue and the green. And then Banshee is somewhere in between. So is the difference between the beast and Banshee, the blue and the pink, is that significant? Is the difference between Banshee and Diamondback, so pink and green, is that significant? That's what we're gonna find out going forward. So here is what Fisher's LSD, or Least Significant Difference Procedure, looks like. So this is our ANOVA table from before. So our null hypothesis is that mu i equals mu j. i and j just represent the two populations we choose for the comparison. And of course, the alternative hypothesis is that they are not equal. Now at the heart of Fisher's LSD procedure is a test statistic or a T statistic. Now it's not that difficult. So T equals, and then we have a fraction. In the numerator, we just have the difference between the two populations we are looking at. It really doesn't matter which one comes first. It's just simple subtraction of the two groups or two populations we're looking at. Now in the denominator, we have the square root of the mean square error now this is why I colored this. So the mean square error is actually the value we have up in our NOVA table at the top, multiplied by one divided by the sample size of the first group we're looking at, plus one divided by the sample size of the second group we're looking at. Again, mathematically, it's not that difficult. Now the denominator as a whole is called the standard error of the difference. So you will sometimes see that in the stats software you use, it'll say standard error of the difference or something similar and that denominator is actually what that represents. And then lastly, we have degrees of freedom. So in this case, the degrees of freedom, again, color-coded, is simply N sub T. All that means is the total number of observations we have. So in this case, we have three groups of 25, so it is three times 25, which is 75, minus K. K represents the number of groups we have. So in this case, it is three. So degrees of freedom equals 75 minus three or 72. Okay, so let's go ahead and find our T statistic for the beast versus Banshee. So here's where we start. So in the numerator, we have 32.7 minus 42.4. 
and that is divided by the square root of 205.76. Remember, that's the mean square error from our ANOVA table. And that's multiplied by 1 divided by 25 plus 1 divided by 25. And that's because each group is a sample size of 25. So now it is just simple math. In the numerator, we have that difference, which is negative 9.7, divided by the square root of 2 of 5.76 times 2 over 25. Keep going. Negative 9.7 divided by the square root of 16.46. So t equals negative 9.7 divided by 4.06. Now we'll point out before we do this any further, I am doing some rounding in here just for the sake of the display of the slide. If you do this in stats software and you will see this in a couple minutes, these numbers might be slightly different and that's because of rounding, but they're close enough. They're basically the same. So we divide that and we have a T value or T statistic of negative 2.39. So the way we interpret this T statistic is the same way we interpret all T statistics. So first we need our degrees of freedom. Again, that's 75 minus three, which is 72. Then we can go into Excel or whatever tool you have. I think Excel is the easiest because most people have it to find the P value. So in Excel, we use the T.dist.2T for two tail. Then we use the 2.39. And again, it doesn't matter if you use the negative or positive because this is two tailed. So 2.39 and then our degrees of freedom of 72. And we have a P value of 0 0.019. Well, what does that mean? Is 0 0.019 less than 0 0.05? Well, yes. Therefore, we can say that the difference between the beast and the banshee is significant. So here is the beast versus diamondback. I'm not gonna walk through the calculation step by step, but we go ahead and do everything. We end up with a T statistic of negative 6.45. Go ahead and use the T.dist.2T .t function in Excel, and we come up with a P value that is way less than 0 0.001. So therefore the difference between beast and diamondback is also significant. Now here's Banshee versus diamondback. We have a T statistic of negative 4.04. Go into Excel using the t.dist.2t .t function, and we have a P value of less than 0 0.001. So this difference is also significant. So what can we say here? The three pairs of coasters we have, the differences between all of them, each pair of them, are all significant. So another way of saying that is that no two of these coasters is equal to each other in average wait time. So here is our comparison summary. Now this is the output from Jump. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through it. So the first comparison is Beast with Banshee. We can see our difference of negative 9.768. That's what we calculated when we did the subtraction. The standard error of the difference, that's the denominator of our T statistic, so 4.057. Now I want to point out about the standard error of the difference is that it's the same for all three of these comparisons. Because remember, in the T statistic calculation, the only thing that changes in this case is the numerator, the two populations we choose to subtract from each other. So as long as your sample sizes are the same size, and I recommend you do that in these cases, the standard error of the difference will always be the same. The next two numbers are actually a confidence level or a confidence interval. So negative 1.680 and negative 17.856. So that is the 95% confidence interval for the difference. Now the thing you ask yourself here is, does that interval contain zero? And the answer is no. So that's further evidence that the difference between the beast and the banshee is significant. So next we have our T ratio, negative 2.40748. We've seen that before. Degrees of freedom is 72. And the probability of the absolute value of T, that's the one we want to focus on for the two tailed, is 0 0.0186. And again, we've seen that before. So we could go down to each comparison and look at each one. The difference we calculated, the standard error of the difference is the same. The 95% confidence interval for the difference, does that interval contain zero? If it does not, then we have more evidence that the difference is significant. Then we have our T ratio for each comparison and then our probability or P value. So just for comparison, here are the T ratios or T values we calculated. So we had T equals negative 2.39. Again, the difference between these two is rounding. So negative 2.40748 
and negative 2.39, the only difference is rounding. So T equals negative 4.04, that's very close to what we have there in the T ratio, and then negative 6.45, again, very close to what we have for Diamondback and the Beast. Only difference is rounding. Now there is another way to look at these type of problems, and that is the critical value approach. So we have T alpha over two, if you remember our T test. So T equals 0 0.05 divided by two, because we choose 0 0.05 as our level. So T equals 0 0.25, degrees of freedom 72. Then we can use Excel to find the critical value or the threshold value. So we could use either one of these functions down below here in the right. The difference is, is T.INV is one tailed, t.inv.2t is two-tailed. So if you do the one-tailed, you just have to do the division there, 0 0.025. If you use the two-tailed, you can use just the 0 0.05 as is. This will give you the same result. I prefer to use the two-tailed because it's more intuitive. So that gives us a critical value of 1.99346. So what we do is take this critical value, again, and ignoring the negative signs or anything, compare that to the t ratios we have over here on the left and ask ourselves, do the T values over here in the left that we calculated either by hand or in the software exceed that critical value of 1.99346? And of course, they all do. So 2.39 is obviously larger, 4.04 is larger, and 6.45 is larger. So we can use the P value approach over here on the left, or we could use the critical value approach over here on the right. They will both achieve the same results for us. Now there is another way to approach these problems sort of from another direction. And that's asking ourselves, what is the minimum difference between two samples that would be a threshold by which if we we're above that, we would say that the difference is significant. So a more concise way of saying that is how large would the difference need to be for that difference to be statistically significant? So here are the null and alternative hypothesis that we had before. Our test statistic in this case is actually the difference between the two groups we're interested in. So the LSD, or the least significant difference, is the minimum difference between two of these samples that we would consider to be statistically significant. Now, everything to the right of the equal sign, guess what? We already have it. So the T alpha over two is actually the critical value we found in the previous slide. It's the 1.999 number. But everything to the right of that is actually the denominator of the previous equation we had. So we have that. Now our test is we will reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of the difference between the two groups we are interested in is greater than or equal to the LSD. And that's why we consider the LSD the minimum difference threshold by which we will judge each difference to be significant or not. So we'll call this the LSD difference threshold. So over here on the left, we have everything from the previous slide. So now we can just plug in the numbers we already have. So remember T alpha over two is the critical value we found a couple slides ago, the 1.99346. Everything to the right of that is the denominator of our previous formula. So go ahead and do this math out. We have 1.99346 times 4.06. So our LSD, or our least significant difference, is 8.093462. So that is the threshold by which we look at the other differences. So here's our difference matrix again. So our LSD is 8.093462. Here are our differences, and I'll go ahead and put those in absolute uh, value notation. So is the difference between the Diamondback and Banshee, is that larger than 8.093462? Well, yes. Beast and Diamondback below that? Yes. Banshee and Beast to the right of that? Yes. So here, finding the LSD, or this least significant difference for the bottom threshold, we can compare that to the differences we have in our samples, and then if it's larger than the sample, we can say that that is statistically significant. Now it does not matter if you use the T ratio method or you use this least significant difference method, you're gonna get the same result either way. Two different ways of doing the same problem. And my advice, like in any problem that has multiple ways of finding the same result, is you can use one method to check your result on the other. So we can conclude that all three pairwise comparisons in this case are different from each other. 
Okay, so that wraps up this video on the ANOVA post hoc analysis. So this video focused on Fisher's LSD procedure, which is least significant difference. As I mentioned, there are others, and you're likely to see them in your stats textbook or in the software you use. So you have Tukey's HSD, which is honestly significant difference. You have Chef's method. And you have the Bonferroni method or procedure, and there are others. Now, all of them essentially do the same thing. And like I mentioned, some of them vary in terms of how conservative they are on finding a difference. Some of them are more appropriate for certain data types and certain data structures. And there is some level of subjectivity in this as well. So please resort to whatever your professor recommends, whatever your textbook says, whatever your data calls for. But essentially, remember that all of these post hoc analysis do the same thing. They are trying to locate the differences between the means once the overall model says that differences exist. So thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. I look forward to seeing you again on our next video. Take care. Bye-bye.